Gun Talk. Brought to you by Sturm Ruger and Company. And by Glock. The most popular rifle being made in the U.S., the AR-15 is favored by hunters, competitive shooters, and people who just like the looks of it. Semi-automatic rifles have been around for more than a hundred years. The M16, the grandfather of our current ARs, was adopted by the U.S. military during the Vietnam War, almost a half century ago. Lightweight and ergonomically designed, the AR is a favorite of those who just like to shoot. The AR-15 platform is often misunderstood. Truth of it is, it's a lot of fun, but it's super versatile. Greg, you've used this thing in law enforcement and also when you deploy in the Middle East. Tell me about the background of this and what you have here. Well, basically, the AR-15, it started from the CAR-15, which mm -hmm. was essentially just a chopped down M16 uh, during Vietnam. They needed uh, collapsible stock and a, a shorter, more compact weapon for special operations troops. Uh, nowadays, it's gone through a lot of changes, a lot of updates. This is a Patriot Ordnance Factory piston-driven AR-15. Different system than the original. Correct. So rather than what's called gas impingement, which it sends those hot, dirty gases back into the chamber to move the bolt, it's now a piston that gets moved from the gas up here. So it stays much cleaner, much cooler, it's much more reliable. And you can shoot it for a longer period of time before you have to clean it. Absolutely. Okay. The basic platform is much improved over the original design and it's easy to shoot, no matter your size or how you use it. I really like my AR-15 because it is a great weapons platform. I mean, it's reliable. It's really easy for people to learn how to operate it. With a minimal amount of training, you can learn how to shoot and manipulate it. It's modular, you can customize it, do whatever you want with it. It's an accurate rifle. A big attraction for carbine fans is the ability to personalize the rifle. Uh, the new rifles now have flat tops with rail systems. Right. No more fixed carry handle up top. So you can mount red dot optics, magnifiers, backup sights, front and rear. I've got a PEQ2 infrared laser uh, aiming designator on here to be used with night vision. Right. You can mount white light, flashlights, uh, any tool you need. While it's fun and even useful to load it up with accessories, some take the AR in a different direction. What I've done with the shoot right katana is try to get back to Eugene Stoner's original concept which is a lightweight, simple rifle designed for fighting. So we put a thin barrel on it that greatly reduces the weight of it. We've got a carbon fiber handguard, which is virtually indestructible, lightweight, it dissipates heat quickly. We've got a light mount on here so that you can attach whatever type light you want. And with a fighting rifle, I definitely want a light on it. So it's a lightweight fighting rifle, and then you can upgrade it according to what your application needs. The trend to fully decked out rifles predictably has led some to simplify. And I tell people when they ask me my opinion on an AR is put what you need on it, not what you want on it. So it's okay to keep it simple. Absolutely. The truth of it is, the ultimate accessory for an AR-15 is a shooter who knows what he's doing, and that comes from training. Every training session needs to start out with a detailed safety briefing. We treat all guns as if they're loaded. Whether it's a blue plastic gun, whether it's a squirt gun, an airsoft gun, I don't care what it is. We treat it as if it's loaded all the time. Never let your muzzle cover anything you're not willing to destroy. We tell people you need three things satisfied in order to put your trigger finger on that trigger. You need to have identified a target. You need to have your sights aligned with that target. And then you need to have made the conscious decision to fire. 
The goal is recalibrating students to give them a safety mindset. Well, obviously safety is a primary factor. Um, we want to make sure that they have the presence of mind to stay calm, think about what they're doing, and be safe with the weapon before anything else. Then we're looking for proper stance, proper fundamentals, all the seven fundamentals of marksmanship that they're using that properly. And then once they get the grasp of the fundamentals, we're going to speed up the pace a little bit, amp up the stress just a little bit, start building that speed, getting fast rounds on target. We try to keep an upbeat course, uh, keep a lot of interaction with the students, you know, lots of shooting. We have a real high round count, we usually shoot about five to six hundred rounds. Coming up, what to do when things go wrong. Malfunction drills. They're tough, but fun.